Hello, everybody. Now I know what you're thinking. He's gone crazy. Does he even know what day it is? But before anyone overreacts, let me argue this. I am aware that people don't post videos on Saturdays because it's the weekend, but maybe that's exactly why I should be posting today. Anyways, today we're gonna be talking about cyanotypes. The other day I was searching the dark web, and I do mean dark, because my Mac auto-updated the other day, and it randomly switched everything to dark mode. But that's besides the point. I was watching some videos on YouTube, and I came across one talking about cyanotypes, and I thought to myself, that's something I should do. So I ordered all the necessities, and here we are talking about it today. What is a cyanotype? Cyanotypes are a photographic blueprint. From what I can gather, this is a printing process that was invented in the 1800s, and it really is pretty awesome. So to make your own cyanotypes, what you're gonna need is as follows. Some chemicals, a brush, some watercolor or other thick paper that's not going to fall apart when wet, the sun and or a UV light, water and hydrogen peroxide. The last one is technically optional, but for people like me who don't have a ton of patience and just want to see the result, necessary. So once you've got the necessities assembled, we're going to have to mix solution A and solution B of the chemicals. And this first part should be done away from any UV light because mixing the two chemicals together is what makes it UV sensitive. So you want to combine equal parts of both A and B. And to note that once combined into this new mixture, the chemical does have a type of reciprocity, meaning that over time the sensitivity is going to get less and less. So only mix together enough that you would use within probably the next two hours. For my first go around, I did try different application methods. I tried just normally painting it on. I tried splattering the page, letting it sit for a while, and then painting it on. I tried flicking the brush to create some splatter effect. And I tried a different size brush. Once your paper is thoroughly coated and you feel good with it, you're gonna wanna set it aside in a dark place to dry so that it really bonds and connects with the paper and doesn't just wash away in the next steps. For these ones that I'm showing you today, I let them dry from 30 minutes to about an hour before putting them under the UV light. Now it is November and it's been pretty consistently cloudy, so I did go ahead and make the investment and buy a UV light. And for all of these images that I'm showing you today, I placed the light about 12 inches away from the paper at full power. But before we expose our newly created UV sensitive paper, we need a negative of the photo we want to print. So what we're gonna do is choose the pictures that we want to print and open them in our editing software, whether that be Photoshop or Lightroom. For this example, I'll use Photoshop. We need to desaturate the photo and make it black and white. And then we need to invert it so that it's a negative. Then all you have to do is print it out on some transparency paper, making sure that you scale it to the correct size so that it matches the paper for our final print. Now that our paper is dry, all we have to do is place that flat on the table and put our transparent negative on top. And then just to make sure that everything stayed flat and didn't get moved around, I did put a piece of glass from a frame on top, which seemed to do the trick. For this video, I did do three rounds of two pictures each, so six pictures in total. And I did make sure to record a time lapse for each of those. So here's some music and enjoy watching the process of these pictures magically appear. So I don't wanna say there is a magic exposure time that's always gonna work. That's gonna depend on how bright the sun is, how powerful your UV light is. You know, there's always tons of factors. Even something like how thick the glass is that you put on top of the picture could affect the exposure length. But for the purposes of this video, the first exposure time I did was eight minutes, and then I tried seven minutes, 
and then I tried nine minutes. And basically my thoughts are that eight plus minutes seemed to work in my case. The seven minute exposures seemed to wash away and really be underexposed, whereas the eight and nine minute ones seemed to really hit the mark. You're really just gonna have to do some trial and error and find out what works best for your circumstances. So after the exposure time has ended, literally all you have to do is begin to rinse the paper off in some water and the chemical is gonna start turning blue. After you've rinsed it to the point that it looks like chemical is no longer coming off the paper or after the water running off of the page turns clear, the last step really is just let it dry. Now, as the newly rinsed chemical begins to oxidize as it dries, the image is going to darken, but you can speed up this process by introducing a second rinse bath after the first in which you're going to introduce hydrogen peroxide into the mixture and that just speeds up the whole process. This really is a cool and quick process that really does bring awesome results. And after making a few of these, I think I'm just gonna make a lot of these and give them away as Christmas gifts. Cause you know, I shoot film and I'm broke. But before I wrap up, I do wanna thank you guys so much for watching this episode in my film journey. If you've never heard of cyanotypes, comment down below, let me know what you think, and let me know if this is a process that you'd consider doing. And if you do make some, head over to my Instagram and send me a message of your results because I'd love to see them. I almost forgot my birthday is coming up on December 3rd, so if everyone could just hold off subscribing, we are so close to hitting a hundred subscribers. And if you want to give me a cool birthday gift, that would be so awesome to hit that mark on my birthday. So like I said, remember, don't subscribe until December 3rd, but we still do have a few more episodes that are coming out before then. So until next time, I'll see you later.